Hi everyone, um, my name is Rich Pierce and today I'm going to go through the Python tutorial uh, following on from the last episode when I looked at the Excel spreadsheet um, searched down a column looking for today's date once I found today's date then I grabbed the corresponding value the idea of this is all going to go into a Twitter bot so I did the Twitter bot a while ago um, he had random sort of messages that were embedded within the code now what I wanted to do is not do that I wanted to actually have an Excel spreadsheet somewhere like on Dropbox um, where I can put the tweets in there the Twitter bot will go off and actually find out which tweets to send from that spreadsheet and then send it out so there's two things I want to do one of them is the date section which is what I'm doing now and the second part where I'm going to come up to is something that's just going to tick through and go through another list of, of tweets one by one by one get to the end of the list and start again but that's sort of separate um, the last episode was really proving a point can I connect to Excel yes I can can I search for today's date yes I can um, that's all fine um, but what occurred to me is the what I did yesterday and I'll put a link up there just to get you back to yesterday um, is that um, it just looked for for today's date and once it found it it returned the value and that was it but I thought to myself well, there's two things really one I've got to make sure if today's date isn't there, it doesn't bring anything back, um, because otherwise it'll just bring something from the end of the file, um, like a bit of an error trap, if you like. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do is to say, if there are multiple messages for the same day, it's got to keep going back and, and just double checking, is there more messages, is there more messages, so not just let the first one goes back and reads uh, multiple messages, if that is the case. So. What we'll do is move on to the code. Um, this is the code from yesterday, slightly altered but not drastically. You'll be able to follow it. We um, just to run through very very quickly. Um, we have to ensure ensure in the command prompt um, um, or the terminal window we have sudo pip install xlrd typed in. That will bring in the library that we need to connect to Excel. Um, so we bring it into um, the Python program. Um, we're importing date time module as well. We're getting today's date. We're converting it to a string, which is year, year, month, month, day, day. Um, again, it all explained in the last video. Printing today. We're opening the workbook. We're going into the sheet dates. We're working out the total rows. We're running through that from row number one, which is missing the header row, which is actually row two, but it's because it starts at zero. Um, getting the Excel dates, printing it. If it finds today, it says whoop de do. Uh, we found today, and we're going to find out where that row is. So I've already run it through. Today's day is 14, 60 rows in there. It's bringing back the dates. Now, on this particular Excel, um, compared to yesterday, obviously, there's multiple days um, per date, as we can see here. So we've got right about three per day, and we've got messages starting at one and one upwards. So a different sort of data set that we're looking at. Okay, um, so the first thing I need to do is to put this loop here into a function, into a defined function. So, to me, a, a function is a subroutine, because that's how I learnt them um, back in the day on the old spectrum. So, go sub and return. Um, they've moved on since then, but very, very similar to what they were um, back in the day. So, we're going to call it define loop oops, loop through Excel and we've got to pass some variables through to it we need to pass through the start row which will be a new variable and we also need the total rows which is what we used to get at the end here start row doesn't exist though so what we need to do is set the loop up which is here so start row equals one which is what it was here. So we get rid of that, and that's now start row. Now, at the moment, as it stands, if we're to run it, it'll probably error. Yes, it did error. Total rows. It doesn't really know. Oh, well, I've not tabbed it in for a start, so I'm just tabbing in. We'll run it through. Yeah, yeah. Loop for rows, total rows. Doesn't like any of that. Oh, because we've not put a colon on there. There we go. Loop through. I'm expecting more to happen. That's what I'm expecting to happen. So we've got the day, we've got the total rows. It skips this completely. It comes down to its Excel value. It says row curve's not found, variable's not being defined. It's confusing for it because we've set that subroutine up. But as it runs through the code, it actually skips this because that's not 
it doesn't run through it it has to be called to go to it to then run it then to return so what we can do now is call it so we will call it state found row equals loop and this is what we're going to call it so we call it loop through excel and we have to pass through the start row which we've just defined um, and the uh, total rows which we defined earlier let's just change this around i'm gonna get myself in knots in a bit so now that's going to equal we have to put a return on here let me put a return on here which has to be back here so we need to return and it is a row cursor found so row cursor found becomes the date found row yeah that makes sense so we're going to loop through that we're going to send the start row which is one so the total rows which is whatever it is like six day into here we're going to run through there it'll do the row cursor found will be whatever that is uh, which will be uh, whatever and then that'll use that in there to to find the value and print it off let's see if that works yes it did it found it found message 140 which is the first message i know that for a fact so that works it's basically the same as we had before um what we need to do now is put that into a loop so it keeps going back and calling it and calling it and calling it so we've got a few things that we need to sort of work out now okay so here's the loop and we're gonna say um, we're gonna do a while loop so while We'll use date found row. Date found row is greater than zero. Then we'll just continue on our merry dance tab that is. So while date found row is greater than zero, then do this loop. Now what I'll do now is I'll define date found row as one in the first instance. That just means we can actually go through the loop. Let's put some pages here we go. Now we need to do a couple more things here because when it goes in it will return the row cursor are found and the start row will be one. So what we need to do is increase the start row so it's not one um, the first time around. So the start row, the start row is equal to the date found. The date found row is the one we've just found which will be row, you know, 50 or whatever um, so we go back and say we'll start at 51 data found row plus one that becomes a new start row rather than one so we're increasing every time the other thing that we need to do is row cursor are found let's just reset this in here just to zero so if we don't find today's day that will return as zero which in this instance will then make it stop um, because it'll do it three times and then stop. Let's just get rid of this Excel there because that's just going to make things horrible when we do it. I think that should be everything. Yes, one, two, three. We've got one, two, three found. Value is because we come back at zero, so we need to do a error message in here. Excel value. Yeah. Rather than just cavalierly, cavalier, rather than just printing the Excel value regardless, we're going to do another bit of sense checking. So we're going to make sure the date found row is greater than zero. So that should get rid of that final value, which it did. So really at this point, this is when you know you have found a match. This is, you know, you have, you have the message. So this whole thing could be put into a, a sort of subroutine of its own, a defined function of its own, um, for the Twitter bot to use, and that's pulling back the message um, that it wants, and it will go back into it. Um, and keep finding multiple messages for the same day. If there's no messages there at all, 
well, it'll never find a date found you, it'll just return like nothing. So that's kind of got the error message, error message, error handling uh, sorted out. Um, so yeah, we'll only tweet something if it's something to be tweeted. Um, so yeah, there we go. Quite a straightforward project, quite um, hopefully simple project, hopefully um, you'll be able to follow it. Um, so the key thing here is, you know, the use of a defined function um, and then a loop to allow you to repeatedly uh, run the same code again until something changes, until you get to the end of the list um, in Excel and you've not found an additional date that matches today. So thanks very much for watching. Um, we'll continue this Twitterbot journey even further. Um, next steps, we're probably looking at um, putting the Excel file onto a Dropbox. Um, so um, Python can read it from there, which makes more sense because I want to be able to edit this on the move. Um, so Dropbox is the obvious place for it to go, and then it can be seen by anyone, anywhere, well, whoever I give the permissions to. Um, so that's sort of the next step. Um, I think that's it for this particular part of it, and then there's the other side of it, there's sort of the, the drip feeding of Twitter, but anyway, that's, that's still to come, and that should be pretty easy, to be fair, once I've done the hard bit. Um, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Um, comments below. Uh, if you liked it, like. If you didn't like it, it's like uh, up to you. I won't lose too much sleep over it. Um, but thanks very much and take care and I'll see you again soon. Cheers.